Today we are in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, painting Christ the Redeemer statue and the view of Rio de Janeiro. We start with a wash, water, and then very small amount of blue coming down across the sky and the distant mountains. I'm aiming for quite a misty fill with this painting and the mist will be on the distant mountains and um, the ocean etc <clears throat> so continue with that down the mountain areas then for the distant mountains we've got some blue you can choose whichever you wish but i'm using a winds of blue at the moment and i'm coming down into the water wash so that um we have that misty effect at the bottom So keep control as much as possible. Use a smaller brush at this stage. And then when we come to the ocean, do broken up washes, as I'm demonstrating now, using a flat brush for more control. And we have a competition again. Just comment below with your favorite painting from my galleries and you then are entered into a competition for a free print so i'm now just using a very small brush you can use something like a number two to show the yellow areas of the beaches but once again very faint for the distance you could use um, a yellow ochre <coughs> or whichever yellow you have available <coughs> continuing with some more washes though these areas as we come forward will be more detailed and stronger in tone so soft in the distance with that misty fill. And then as we get closer, we put more detail in and the hue is stronger. Using something like a number four, number six at this stage, you could use your yellow wash mixed with a green, whatever you have available. I'm using permanent sap green same principle at this little distant mountain area little wash of water and then go into the pigment whilst it's still wet and having a little bit of a misty fill where it meets the ocean continue with that now this is a very detailed painting therefore in order that the tutorial is not too long i'm showing parts of it to make something like 16 minutes total for this tutorial because there is a lot of repetition as you can see in these areas as we get closer and closer the Christ the Redeemer statue will be painted last. So please watch the tutorial all the way to the end. Also remember to like and subscribe because if you do so, you'll be notified of future videos or tutorials. And you can see them anyway, but at least you'll be notified of them. And we'd like to build up as many sus subscribers as possible in order that we can get more airtime. Then at the tops, 
of those areas to go into a darker color. You could mix a little bit of red with the blue and the green to achieve um, a darker area. So those very distant ones have been done as well as the Sugarloaf Mountain. And you will see that the light is coming from the left. So on that Sugarloaf Mountain you see much lighter on the left hand side, darker on the right side. So mixing lots of wet in wet taking place here, which you know um, in transparent watercolor we do a great deal of. And in this way you can achieve great variation in the painting, which um, makes for a much more convincing finished artwork. I'm carefully painting around the structures of the buildings, many of which are very tall buildings. And the detail of those will be painted in later. So effectively, that aspect is called negative painting because you're painting around something that you want left. And this is the English style of transparent watercolor painting because for the whites, we are leaving the paper. We are not using an opaque white on top. So we're about seven minutes through of this 16 minute tutorial. Varying the different shades of greens and reds and browns on the mountain area. using quite a small round pointed brush at this stage for detail continuing the same principles start with your wash just a little bit of green in the wash lots of water so that when we put the darker wash at the top area like now it fuses in and remember to have your paper at an angle please like and subscribe when you have your paper at an angle the pigment will work its way slowly down the paper which is what you want to achieve I would normally have my painting service on an angle of about 25 30 degrees to allow that progression of the pigment down the paper and this is as usual arches 300 pound rough paper it is a very good robust paper very strong you can manage to take uh, lots of washes on it it will keep its structure it won't buckle, you don't need to tape it down and you don't need to do a wash over the whole of the paper to start with to make sure that um, it's wrinkle free because it's such a robust, strong, heavy paper and I think the rough paper is better for this type of painting As I said, because it's a very long painting to achieve, this tutorial is showing parts and then coming forward to other parts. Now you can see those buildings more defined because of this closer mountainous area. Continue with all of that, lots of washes going on, painting around areas again, and as you see, 
on those areas at this stage I've painted those in first because they're not white they're a darker colour then painting around them do remember about that competition just comment below with your favourite painting and you'll be entered into the competition there'll be a draw and the winner will be able to choose a free painting from my Etsy site and um, it will be free postage as well remembering at this stage again the light coming from the left therefore you see here there and all over the place lighter areas on the left darker on the right now a fine um, brush you can use something like a uh, number two and um, painting in the shadow sides of buildings first and then we've got a little variation in some of the color of the tall buildings some are a little yellowy browny color others are white and then once we've done that on those buildings and it's reasonably dry we just drop in little horizontal lines to show different parts of the building windows and different floors etc there are little rocky outcrops here and there which have a brownish color reddish brownish so mix your yellow and your reds to achieve that here and there I'm also using the, what we call a dry brush technique not exactly dry but it has less less water more pigment and it enables me to scrape on the surface of the paper and this paper is so robust that it allows you to do that technique As you can see from the large mountain area already completed, there has been a lot of that dry brush technique taking place. We're just over 12 minutes through. So we just had four minutes ago. Continuing with that, you see I've left, I've done the same principle of left. Um, buildings on the left here executed the, exactly the same principle as I did with the buildings on the right the darker areas here and there near those buildings help emphasize the buildings And there are little bits of green in between them here and there. Now we're painting the principal structure, Christ the Redeemer statue. And I'm, I'm using a grey type wash, so blue with a tiny touch of red. And first of all, emphasizing the shadow areas on the statue. And then once I've done that, I can go into a clear wash of water and fuse that in as we progress with painting the statue there'll be more definition as different areas dry and we can get in more detail of the statue different folds etc Emphasizing again, keeping the light area on the left and underneath the arms there with the clothing where there would be shadow. Now putting in some of the detail of the folds. And up top there, emphasizing the dark area and coming in with a wash of water again
I think um, that this approach for this subject is convincing. Remember to like and subscribe, get notified of future videos. Emphasizing those different folds in the material. And um, I think once you see the final painting, very soon now, you'll see that we have achieved what we set out to do. Something that is very atmospheric. So just a continuous process. You could even practice some of this detail on a separate piece of paper first, uh, so that you know how to handle the washes. And here we are. Thanks for watching. I think we have a very convincing result, and I hope that you tackle this one. Bye for now. Until next time. And happy painting.